lovely painter people and welcome back to the studio here in Northumberland. And today I'm going to do a really simple little watercolour painting. And I'm working from the book, ready to paint in 30 minutes, Bolts and Harbours. This, if you haven't got it, get it. <laughs> because it's a really useful little book. There's all the projects stage by stage. It's all in there. Loads of things to do and to keep you busy for a long, long time. And in the front, you've got all the tracings. Now, you can either use the tracings as tracings or use them just as a reference drawing, just a copy, if you don't like using tracings. The painting I'm going to do today is this one. There. Very, very simple indeed. No messing about with that. And mainly big brushes. So, before... I actually start this one. I'm just going to do the tiniest little bit of drawing just to show where I want the water about there. I'm not going to paint any, draw any trees or anything. All the way across there. And that will about do. So, as you can tell, a very detailed drawing. <laughs> uh, excuse me. Easy peasy. I'll leave that now. Now it's time for the sky. I'm using my one and a half inch Aquafine wash brush for this. It just carries a heck of a lot of water. And so before any paint, loads and loads of water. From the top, coming all the way down to that horizon line that I've drawn. At this stage, you can't put too much water on, just, you can't put too much on, but you can put too little on. Just give yourself the time by putting enough water on. And this is a little bit of light red, mixed with a tiny touch of alizarin crimson. Always keep your palette clean, like mine, obviously. <laughs> a little bit of that across the middle there. Gonna have that a little bit stronger, actually. Yeah, that's better. Now, this is a new use for the sand, Charles Evans sand. A bit of sand and a tiny touch of yellow ochre into the sand will give me a kind of a Naples yellow colour. Bit of yellow. See what a nice colour that gives me. That's sand with a touch of yellow ochre. Mop up again. Now, ultramine blue. That's French ultramine blue with a tiny touch of light red. Going from the top. A little bit more light red in that, I think. Yeah, that's better. Coming from the top, all the way through there. And just into the sand look. Nice light strokes. Wash out, squeeze out, and again, mop up. Now, here's a very handy little trick. I'll just get rid of my palette for a second. And what I've got here is a piece of kitchen roll, which I've folded in half. There's a 10p. And twist it round so there's no sharp edges. Just pop that on there. And press and hold. Take it off. How easy is that? Now, back in with the Ultramine Blue and Light Red, and I've changed my three quarter inch wash brush this time. Again, Aquafine, Ultramine Blue and Light Red. And we'll have a couple of bits through there like so. Don't go mad with these. It's effective just to have a couple going through. There, I'll do. Now I'm going to wash my brush out, squeeze out, and just take a little bit of paint out of it. A little bit here. 
just above where I put the dark. And again, mop up. Now, what a simple little sky that is, but all done and finished while it's still good and wet. Now, I'll leave that to dry for a second or two. Now, can you see how much softer that's dried now? It will always get that little bit lighter and paler as it dries out. That's the beauty of watercolour, so always allow for that. Um, and the only way you can go wrong with that sun, moon, whatever, is if you try and use 50p. <laughs> because then it's got for sharp edges. Make sure you've got a good round coin on there. Um, it makes sense to me. It's amazing how many times I've seen the wrong coin use and you end up with a messy orb rather than a, a round one. Now, I'm changing to my number eight round brush this time. And I've got Ultramine Blue and Burnt Sienna. Remember, I only use eight colours in total, ever. Not just for this painting, but ever. That's all I carry. Oh, sorry, nine really, because I've got the sand as well, the Charles Evans sand, which is that one. A very, very useful colour. Now, into that Ultramine Blue and Burnt Sienna mix, I'm adding the tiniest touch of Hooker's Green. Don't want much. Just so it's not quite black. A little bit of water into there, and all I'm doing, look, is with the side of my round brush, just tap on. Very, very simple. And I'm leaving bits of the underpaper showing through here and there. And a few more bits here. Looks a bit of a mess, it'll be alright. He said hopefully. <laughs> a bit here. And then go back there. Now what I'm going to do is a line underneath the mop, which is going on my water line. water actually into there. Not quite that much water Evans. There, that's better. It's important obviously if you wanted a, a sharper edge on the top to make sure that your sky is good and dry. If it's still wet it will start and soften in which again is a useful technique a little bit of softening, but I didn't want it on this one. Now, still with my round brush, all I'm going to do now is draw down a few sticks from here. And that makes them into trees in the distance. Just with the tip of the round brush. Round brush, number eight round, is a really useful size. Because it's a number... 10 or 12 can be a little bit big if you wanted fine point stuff like this. And number six can be a bit small. Number eight is just a perfect size because you can use the side of it or the point of it. Press on a little bit harder and you get a broader stroke. Really useful size brush. There. Isn't that simple? A couple of little bits here and there. and leave those to dry. In the meantime, I'm going to do the water. Now I've changed back to my three quarter inch wash brush. I only use four brushes in total. I've got the three quarter, which you've already seen. I've got the one and a half inch big flat brush, which you've already seen. Number eight round, which you've already seen. And my number four rigger. There. Four brushes in total, all Aquafine. All really inexpensive, but really useful. My set is about two years old now, and it gets abused every day of, it, every day of the lives. 
and I also use the same set, not the same set, but the same brushes um, for my acrylics. I've got another set of the same for my acrylic paints. So good sturdy brushes, which will carry a lot of water. And they're not expensive at all. That one is about £2.50. And I think that one's about four quid or £4.50 or something. All on my website anyway. So I'm going back to my three quarter inch brush. Uh, yeah, my three quarter inch brush. And I've got, again, Ultramine Blue, bit of light red, and a tiny touch of Cooker's Green again. And plenty of water into this. And for the water, the water, for the water, <laughs> the hello, I'm just going to go straight across there. Like right, so. Come down. Just go up to there with the sharp of the brush. Get some more paint on there, Evans. And again, coming forward there. A little bit more water. And I shall leave that to dry, good and solidly now, before I do any more. Because to finish this painting off, it's nearly done. To finish this painting off, I've got a lot of reeds and grasses and stuff. Sorry, grasses growing up here. Wash out, squeeze out, and just take a little bit of paint out here and there. Get some light on that. And as I always say, that's a very effective technique, the taking out bit. And like all effective techniques, people say, oh, that's good, I'll have some more of that. And by the time you finish fiddling, you end up with no water left. Just a load of taking out bits. And so now, I'll leave it to dry. The, the water is good and dry, and so... It's in with some rushes and grasses, grasses, stuff like that in the bottom just to finish off the painting. And I'm going to go for various different lights in this. I've got, again, the yellow ochre. But there's the yellow ochre, nice and bright. Now if I put sand into there, look, Charles Evans sand. Look, that makes it more of a Naples yellow type of colour. See how lovely that is. The sand, such a youthful colour. And again, flicking up now. Just flick, push the brush in, look, flick up. And get some light on the outer edge there. Now, a little bit of maple, sorry, a little bit of yellow ochre just by itself, without the sand. And again, flick. Now, a little bit of burnt sienna. And flick into the other colours. Three quarter inch brush, really useful for grasses. And if I wanted some taller, more defined grass, few more there, then just pop up, come up like so. Sharper still, still with burnt seal. See? Such a useful brush that one. I love the three quarter inch wash brush. A little bit of raw umber now. Raw umber, again, for those of you that know, but the, for those of you that don't, raw umber by itself is a nice brown. Actually, I'll just do a little bit on the side here, look. Raw umber by itself, look. Lovely brown. Now, if I take that raw umber and put a touch of Ultramine Blue into it, I've got a 
nice sepia. More brown, more brown. There. There's a nice sepia. Put a touch of burnt sienna into my sepia mix. And I've got Bandai Brown. Take my raw umber and burnt sienna by themselves. Just the two. And I've got burnt umber. Lovely mixing brown. Now, I've got a little bit of raw umber by itself. Back to the grass. Grass. Flicking up again. And again, some taller flicky bits. So you have seen the water through that. Actually, a little bit there. Now, some hooker's green and burnt sienna with a touch of blue in as well. Hooker's green, burnt sienna, so it's nice and dark. Touch of blue into that. Nice dark rich green there, look. And again, pop a bit of that in there. This is the red wine stroke. The handshake better when you've had red wine. <laughs> Over there. And a little bit there. Now, just say I wanted some lighter bits in amongst all that grass. A few bits there. For lighter bits, all I need to do. I was once doing this in a show somewhere, I, I think it was in Dublin actually, when this guy piped up, he said, are you flicking upwards or are you flicking downwards? I'm just playing the piano. And there, very simply done. Shall we have a bird in there? I think we will. For once, I'm going to use my Riga brush. Ultimate blue and burnt sienna. And we'll have... With a stick. Now all I need to do is take the tape off there. And there we go. A very simple little painting. But there's no messing about, but it's really quite effective that one. The paints I'm using, strictly speaking, are students' quality paints. But Dale Ramy reformulated those and they're now a lot stronger than they were. Um, good, luscious, strong colours, as you can see by what I've used. Um, Aquafine paints, and they're about one pound each a tube. They're for nothing, um, but they're really good and strong. Lovely colours. And the paper I'm using is called the Langton Rough. Again, it's not, a, not an expensive paper. It's only a hundred and forty pound weight, and I never pre-stretch. Just, just tape a sheet to the board, or half a sheet, because I have demonstrators packs, which are really big sheets. Chop a sheet in half, tape it to the board. No pre-stretching, no messing about. And it will never wobble and, and, and mess about. And the other side of it is just as right to paint with as that side, because it's internally sized. There's no wrong side to paint on. So, Langton Rough, Aquafine colours, Aquafine brushes, and that book. The book, such a useful book. Oaks and Harbours in 30 minutes. That sells so many copies all over the world and it's in lots of different languages. So get yourself a copy and enjoy painting. Everything that I use is available on my eShop, charlesevansart.com. Go to the eShop. It makes it sound like I know what I'm talking about with technology and I've got no idea. But it's all there. Have a look. Like I say, none of it's very expensive. More importantly than anything else, enjoy your painting. Bye-bye.